calculate the mass currents I1 and I2. Okay, we are going to use mass analysis in this problem. Okay, there are a few steps that we need to do. The first one is label the loops. Label the mass or the loops. Okay, we have already given by the problem that this is loop I1 and this is loop I2. So we don't need to do step number one, but usually we don't have this loop currents here. Okay, so now we need to do the second step here, which is to do KVL for each loop. To do KVL for each loops. Okay, let's exactly do that. Let's do KVL at loop I1. KVL at loop I1. What does KVL say? KVL says that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. But the problem here is we have to be very careful about the sign. And let's see what can we get from loop I1 here. Here the loop is going clockwise and let's start from this 45 volt voltage source. The current is flowing to the negative terminal and it goes to the positive terminal. So it's like this. Because it goes to the negative terminal, we will have negative sign, which is minus 45. Good. And this is our first component. And let's move on to this 2 ohm resistor. So we will have 2 ohm there. But remember, we need to have it in voltage. So to get voltage from resistance, we need to multiply it by the current. The only current that pass through this 2 ohm resistor is this I1. So we'll have I1 here. Okay, now let's move on to this 12 ohm resistor. So we'll have 12 ohm, but here we have a different case. I1 here is going down, but then I2 is going up. So we need to subtract them, but how? Currently, we are working on I1, so we multiply it by I1 first, okay? But then I2 is flowing to the opposite direction of I1, so we will subtract I2 from it. Good. And then the last component here, we will have 4 ohm. So we'll have 4, and remember 4 is resistance, so we need to multiply it by the current. The only current that pass through it is I1. So we'll have 4 I1. All of that will equal to 0. Good. And now let's do some simple math here. So we'll have 2 I1. Okay, let's multiply 12 to the brackets. So we'll have 12 I1. And then minus 12 I2. And then plus 4 I1. Okay, let's move this minus 45 to the right hand side. So we'll have 45. Good. And now we will have 2 plus 12, that will be 14. And then 14 plus 4, that will be 18. We have 18 I1. And then minus 12 I2. And all of that will equal to 45. And I think nothing further that we can do from here. So let's set this as equation number one. Okay, here we have two variables, I1 and I2. So we need one more equation, right? Because this is equation number one. And one more equation, it comes from KPL at loop I2. KPL at loop I2. Again, KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Let's start from this 12 ohm, 12 ohm resistor. So we'll have 12. And remember, we need the voltage. So we multiply it by the current. But here there are two currents, right? I1 and I2. But now we are working on I2. So I2 is multiplied first. So we'll have I2. But then here, I1 is flowing to the opposite direction of I2. I2 is going up, I1 is going down, right? So we'll have I2 minus I1. Good. And then let's move on to this 9 ohm 
resistor so we'll have 9 and the only current that pass through it is I2 so we multiply it by I2 to get the voltage okay and now we have a voltage source it is already in volt so what we need to remember is the sign so it the current goes here to the positive terminal so the sign will be positive and the magnitude will be 30 volt so we'll have plus 30 here good and then for the last component we will have 3 ohm and to get the voltage we multiply by the only current that pass through it we will have i2 all of that will equal to zero good now let's do some simplification we will have 12 i2 minus 12 i1 and then plus 9 plus 3 that will be 12 i2 and then let's move the 30 to the right hand side so we'll have minus 30. good and now we will have minus 12 i1 and then plus 12 plus 12 that will be 24 and that will be i2 and all of that will equal to minus 30 and this is our second equation here so we will have this as equation number two and we have two variables and two equation linear so we should be able to solve it right so the third step is just to solve the equation solve equation one and equation two and i think the fastest way to do it is by using calculator why yeah, because usually in circuit analysis class you are allowed to bring calculator so why not just use that to fasten the process okay let's set this up and equation solver this button is for setup equation solver is number five and then two variables is number one okay let's just plug in that will be 18 as the coefficient of i1 and then minus 12 as the coefficient of I2 and then 45 as the coefficient of the linear term okay and then this one will be minus 12 and then 24 and then minus 30 good and so we will have I1 is 2.5 I1 is 2.5 and the unit will be in ampere right because we have volt and ohm and it will become ampere and what is i2 i2 is the y value that is calculated in the calculator and that will be zero zero ampere and number four is just to answer the question okay and i think we have the mass currents ready the question is asking us about i1 and i2 right and so we will have i1 is this value here and i0 is this value here so i think that's all the steps for calculate the mass currents i1 and i2 hopefully i did not make any mistakes in this calculation thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye